Welcome back to Meet the Candidates. Right now, I have the pleasure of speaking with Mr. Michael Harris. How are you tonight? Pretty good. How are you? Great. Right. Um, look at the camera and just let the people know who you are and what ward you're running for. Uh, my name is Michael Harris. I am running for the second ward city council seat. Um, lifelong Flint resident. Uh, born and raised in Flint. Uh, come from St. John and through urban renewal, uh, moved to the uh, western, northwestern part of this, uh, the city. Uh, grew up in the first ward, but I've been living in the second ward for 22 years. Uh, this is my city. I love Flint. It is, uh, it's beautiful, it's vibrant, um, and it, it's got a lot to offer anybody from anywhere, and it, I, it ranks uh, with any city around the world. Okay. Mm -hmm. Why do you think you are qualified to run for a city council seat? Well, look, I've got leadership potential. I've got leadership abilities. Um, I'm a UAW member. I've also uh, ran a Fortune 500 company. I had 500 employees working for me when I was with General Motors uh, Security. Um, I ran Flint, Saginaw, and Bay City, and I fired employees, uh, unfortunately sometimes, and hired employees many times. There are employees still looking, working for General Motors Security that I hired over 20 years ago. Um, I've got that leadership potential, that leadership ability, and I've been doing that for years. I'm, I'm thoroughly invested in that. Okay. What is one of the biggest problems facing Flint? Well, we got we got a lot of problems. I think, of course, everybody understands the crime. We've got a problem with crime. But one of our major problems is jobs. You know, Billy Durant and Charles Stewart Mott um, didn't wait around for somebody to come here and build this city. They started jobs right here in the city. Jobs that are still, uh, that we're still paying dividends from 70, 80 years ago. You know, this city needs jobs. And the people in this city can provide them. We've got to nurture entrepreneurship. I think that's one of our major uh, tasks ahead. As to crime, um, you know, crime is one of our major issues. I'm living in the second ward. I'm also looking at the second ward as the most dangerous ward in the most dangerous city in the country. That's a tra tragedy. It's unbelievable, and it shouldn't happen. But that's saying a lot. The most dangerous, let me say that again, the most dangerous ward in the most dangerous city in the country. And uh, we can't let that stand anymore. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Well, the county is considering removing the felony box from the job applications. Okay. Do you think that's something Flint should do? Uh, absolutely. You know, uh, once you've served your time, you've got an opportunity to change your life and do things, uh, uh, get, get a second chance. America's a place of second chances. I truly believe in that. Flint should be a place of second chances. You know, I've had this small little dream of having a corporation or a company that does nothing but specialize in hiring felonies, felons, or former felons. And the board set up to, uh, of former felons who can weed through these uh, young individuals who come in or even older individuals who want to change their life. Uh, I can imagine a board of nine or seven people say, yeah, this guy's good. He wants to turn his life over. Well, I've seen this kind of guy here. Let's give him a chance to go through a particular program. But we can do that right here in Flint. We can be the catalyst for changing how felons are viewed around the world. Mm -hmm. um, we have that opportunity. Okay. What tools do you feel like the Flint Police Department mm -hmm. is missing to mm -hmm. help them fight crime and enforce crime? Yeah, yeah. Uh, I was endorsed by the Flint Police Officers Association. And uh, talking to uh, Kevin Smith, one of the great officers there, uh, he's the president of Flint Police Officers Association. You know, he told me succinctly, he said, Mike, I take every able-bodied police officer, put them out into the high crime areas, flood those areas, and tap down on crime. Also, additionally, uh, hiring more detectives and getting them on the streets. You know, at this point, what we're looking at now, and I see this all around our community, the state police have taken over. We're in a, what I would call an occupation. And they're not necessarily, I'm not knocking the state police officers doing what they were tasked to do. But they're just making stops. Mm -hmm. They're not going down deep into the community, learning who people are, getting to know the residents, talking to individuals. That's what policing is all about. You know, Flint, Flint was that community that taught other cities how to community police. Mm -hmm. We've lost that uh, knack. Particularly, I'm concerned because uh, when you see other police officer uh, jurisdictions come in, that's jobs. I'd love to see some of my friends and some of the young people in this community say, look, I'm going to be a Flint police officer one day. That's going to be my job. Mm -hmm. 
And we can't offer them that right now. That, that vision isn't there. That hope isn't there. And if I'm able to be the second ward city council person, I'll offer that. Okay. In less than 18 months, mm -hmm. city council will be able to vote out the emergency manager. Right. How mm -hmm. will you vote? Well, listen, <laughs> this, this is easy for me. This is a dictatorship. The emergency manager needs to go. We basically have uh, Mr. Schneider running the city of Flint. And he's going to make sure that it's, get, it's run into the ground. We actually have a bigger deficit now than we did when the emergency manager came in. He hasn't solved anything anywhere that he's been. There's been Harbor, Highland Park, Flint the first time, Flint the second time, Flint 2.5 that we have now with Brown, Brown back in, Brown back out, Kurtz back in. This is ridiculous. This is, uh, um, is nonsense. And we've got to get back to the serious uh, situation of getting people back to freedom, justice, and uh, you know, um, what what's really matters is uh, a city that is run by the people. That's what it, the democracy is all about. Mm -hmm. And we don't have that anymore. All right, now, tell me a little bit how you feel about the Kira Gandhi water project. Well, it remains to be seen. I know one thing, our water bills are the highest water bills we've ever seen anywhere, any place, at any time. And uh, I don't know if this is gonna solve the problem. I like to think it is, but it remains to be seen. It's gonna cost us a lot of money. It's going to cost Flint residents specifically a lot of money. I don't see the burden being shared by our county residents. When has the, Flint's the middleman. We buy our water from Detroit and we sell it to other areas. When have you seen the middleman pay more for a product than the end user? Mm -hmm. And here we are paying more for a product than the end user. Now, I, I do believe um, if you're looking forward, we do need to find some kind of way to make this thing work or a particular problem, a particular uh, aspect of this work. I think it could be a wonderful thing for my grandchildren, probably. Right. <laughs> <laughs> and you have to look forward to the future. Um, but we've got a lot of uh, legwork to do on it. I don't even know if the other counties have even bought in on it yet. There's still monies uh, um, that need to be uh, tacked on to this. It's going to cost us a billion dollars. That's with a B, a billion dollars. Um, and can this community afford it? Can it be continually put on the backs of the city of Flint residents? Um, these bills are outrageous. Okay. Totally outrageous. If given a chance, what yeah. ordinances would you strengthen or create? Uh, city of Flint ordinance? Mm -hmm. I, you know, um, I, I don't know yet. I'd have to look in, into that and find out what needs to be um, uh, strengthened. I think some of the city of Flint ordinances are fine. They're just not enforced. Right. Um, there are other ordinances that aren't enforced that we don't we've forgotten about mm -hmm. and so um i think we've got to make sure we do the right thing with our ordinances and i have to get into the city council um position look into it a little deeper mm -hmm. and find out what's going on with those okay mm -hmm. were you in favor of the street light tax or the genesee towers tax whoa okay <laughs> first of all let's talk about the genesee towers uh, we built for eight million dollars a parking structure but the Genesee Towers, if we put $8 million into that, it already had a parking structure, and we could have used that right down into the middle of the city, a great location for a parking structure. Let's set that aside. That's a whole other issue. Let's talk about streetlights for a minute. If we look at streetlights, why haven't we gone to something uh, innovative like solar lighting? You pay it once, you may pay a few fees here and there of maintenance, but they're set. As a matter of fact, solar lights, and I'm going to be the first one to say this, Solar lights even work when the power goes out anywhere else. So we don't have to even worry about that. You could take, uh, theoretically, the $20 million that has come in uh, for tearing down houses, <clears throat> and you could put 6,000, 7,000 solar lights up. Just uh, calculate. 7,000 solar lights mm -hmm. in the community. People wouldn't have to worry about them going all out. Uh, people wouldn't have to worry about the problems with them but nobody's talking about solar lights because they want to continue to tax the residents with this lighting bill. It's, it's crazy, it's insane, and it's just another way to gouge the residents of the city of Flint. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now, did you participate in Imagine Flint? Uh, yeah, when I could. Um, I tried to do what I could to put my input into it. Uh, there are a lot of problems with what's going on with it. Um, people are talking about green space. I don't know if that's necessarily a thing that's, that's great about Flint. 
Uh, my issue with green space is this. If you've had a grandmother who's been on her block, she's lived, she's paid her mortgage, lived through the crack wars of the 80s, uh, lived through houses being burned down beside her, lived through loud music and everything, and now she's the only house left on the street. She lives in a suburban setting. This is what everybody wants to have. Now you're going to tell her she has to leave? She's got her dream. She's actually finally been able to sit down and relax and enjoy her neighborhood without all of the nonsense. Um, I don't have the heart to tell her to leave. She should be able to stay there. She should be able to get all of the services that anybody else provides. Right. To exactly. anybody else. Okay. Now, do you feel like there should be required training for council members for their powers and their responsibilities? Wow. Yeah. Um, required training. I, and, and there should be a program in place as council persons come on to uh, move them through the system, uh, um, to educate them, um, to work with them on the city charter. I, I've got my city charter here. Mm -hmm. I, I take it with me everywhere I go. I want to study it. I study it all the time and learn from it. I think the city, city charter is um, amazing. It's an amazing document. It's like the, um, the Constitution of the United States. The city charter is something we need. And um, uh, it, it can educate us, and it can educate anybody going forward to be on the city council. Okay, I thank you for your interview. Mm -hmm. I want you to look at the camera okay. and let the city people know sure. why they should vote for you for this November's election. Yeah, uh, look, I love Flint. This is my city. This is our city. You know, going forward, we have to talk about new leadership. Vision, changes to... Uh, uh, to things that have not gone completely our way. But this city is the city, used to be the city, that offered hope. This was the city that taught people how to have community policing, uh, to have community school directors. We went all over the world and taught other people this, uh, this, these great things about Flint. We need to get back to those things. But additionally, we need to, in Flint, uh, look forward to the future and innovate and do great things in this city. I love this city. I think it's going to be wonderful going forward. The second ward is the most dangerous ward in the city of Flint. It's the most dangerous ward in the country. We've got to change that. We can do that if we elect Michael J. Harris to the city, city council of the second ward. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Mr. Harris. All right. Thank you. And we'll be back.